Kara no Kyokai, Tsuki Hime, Fate's Day Night, Melty Blood. All of these wonderfully crafted series can be traced to one famed company, one with a history spanning decades. Just one small dojin circle had built the foundations for multiple successful franchises, amassing a loyal fan base around the globe who, to this day, talk about these decade old stories, with them becoming more prominent now than they ever were. But how exactly did they start? How did they grow? How are they doing? And what road will they take for the future? Kinoko Nasu, an aspiring author with many ideas within the realm of urban fantasy, one day wrote his first novel, Mahots Kai no Yoru, but unfortunately trying to get it published ran into many complications regarding the excessive length and detail put into it. With attempts submitting to multiple firms not going the way he hoped, he settled with just passing it around his own social circle. Alongside Nasu, he collaborated with a close friend from junior high, Takashi Takeuchi, who'd create the cover art and character designs not only for his aforementioned novel, but for nearly every project Nasu will create in the future. October 1998, the duo had created their first work to be seen by the public, being posted on a website the two made, Take Boki. That work being a web novel, Kara no Kyokai, The Garden of Sinners. Starting out as a five chapter novel, being expanded upon in the future. In May of the following year, Nasu had wrote a short story for the angel themed anthology Angel Voice, aptly naming it Angel Notes. It became an influential piece for Nasu, though to become the roots for his future work. Notes, as well as Kara no Kyokai, led to the creation of the trunk, his company name and branching off elements of these stories to many of his subsequent narratives. Later that year, Nasu and Takeuchi decided to take a step forward with their work, establishing their own doujin studio, appellated Type Moon. Soon after the organization's establishment, they released their first product, Tsukihime. Unexpectedly, this would become an instant success, becoming one of the most popular and influential visual novels of its time thanks to its rather unique take of storytelling within the medium structure. It became a huge confidence booster for Nasu that, the very next year, came the release of Tsukihime Plus Disc, followed by fan disc Kagetsu Toya, then teaming up with developer Watanabe Productions to create a fighting game spin-off, Melty Blood, a series of games that would have continuous updates and releases. In 2003, Tight Moon has evolved as a company, signing under Kodansha Publishing with the name Notes Co becoming an official commercial organization as a result, using their new status to push forward their most successful and notable release to date. Fate Stay Night, a project Nasu had pondered upon since high school, and with many revisions and edits to the original script, it was brought to the market in January of 2004. Due to the game's quality and name of Nasu, it was crowned one of the best-selling visual novels, spawning a fan disc, Fate Hollow Ataraxia. All of these narratives were tied to a single universe, while not having any direct relation to one another. The text throughout these stories contained the same concepts, names, and connections between a few characters. All of this established the foundation of the fictional world built by Nasu, given the moniker Nasuverse. Though there was one string that was cut from this web, DDD, Decoration Disorder Disconnection, an unfinished light novel series with two volumes released in 2004. Kara no Kyokai, Tsukihime, and Fate Stay Night, the three major entries into this vast world had created the stopping power for Tight Moon to become one of the biggest names in the visual novel industry. But due to the niche of visual and light novels at the time, the only way to guarantee a gain in recognition was to make their way into the anime market. While the source material for such series became a success in Japan, what had broadened the audience is undoubtedly the anime adaptations to Nasu's beloved works. It was around this time that Tight Moon would go on a production boom, with an abundance of new entries into its shared universe and adaptations of those entries. With the name of Tight Moon leaping from this niche visual novel group to a renowned name in the anime industry, Starting in 2006, the first notable adaptation was for the visual novel Fate Stay Night, done by Studio Dean, 
The anime loosely covered Fate, the first route of the game. 2006 was also the start of a trend for the Fate series, with the manga Fate Kalyan Liner Prisma Ilya to be the first of many separate timeline spin-offs of Fate Stay Night. While ostensibly harmless, its existence is that of an asymptomatic disease, lying in wait to spread. At the end of that year, Fate Stay Night had received a prequel, Fate Zero in the form of a light novel by author Gen Urobuchi, having a total of four volumes spanning from December 29th and ending exactly a year later on the same date in 2007. With the constant push for Fate entries with the two aforementioned series and a couple of spin-off manga, Tight Moon had yet to succumb to the Fate curse, pushing forward to give attention to the one that started it all. December 1st, 2007 marked the beginning of a 10-film journey for Kara no Kyokai, The Garden of Sinners. Animated by Studio UFO Table, it left its mark with a visually stunning opening film. 2007 also held the release for the physical volumes of DDD, while itself wasn't a monumental release for Tight Moon. What was said by its author would be the first shift in how his work would change. After the release of the second volume, Nasu would go to write in his blog about his work schedule and information about the complete story of DDD, writing, That's why DDD is a total of four volumes. It doesn't end with three. Then going on to say, Now I'm really wondering if I could do it myself, but I would like to give you a brief report. There have been various schedule updates and the order of my personal and Tight Moon work has changed. It seems that DDD 3 and 4 will be started with a slight shift. I'm sorry to all the readers who expected 3 by the end of the year. It was only 4 months that I was able to take a break from Tight Moon and work individually. Yet, as of now, it is 14 years later, and not a word has been heard about the release of DDD 3. Early in the year of 2008, a magazine issue, Tight Moon Ace, had begun publication. It gave fans of Tight Moon updates on near future works and interviews involved with said works production. Volumes were released on an inconsistent basis, yet delivered the right information to keep the fans satisfied. It was in another magazine issue, Tech Jam, that Nasu had made three announcements to rile up fans. The release of Mahotsukai no Yoru, now in the form of a visual novel, a remake to Tsukihime, and a new visual novel series, Girls Work, were on the list of things to come. As time passed, that excitement seemed to gradually die down. Mahoyo, originally slated to release in 2009, got pushed back to 2012. The other two were put in a precarious situation. Girl's work has only had one mention aside from its initial announcement, and the only hint at Tsukihime Remake's existence being a promotional video in 2013. Other than that, the existence of Girl's work and Tsukihime Remake were just simply words that became lost in the wind. Within that time came a whole new verse within the Fate series, Fate Extra, a dungeon crawling RPG for the PSP. There was also a modest and piece that is dear to me personally, the novella Tsukino Sango, a story set in the year 3000 about a girl who comes to understand what it means to tell a story. August 12th, 2011, salvation for the Tight Moon fanbase was closer than they had expected. Disguised as a comedic OVA series, was the peak of Tight Moon. On the mountain they had hiked, they could go no further. The only path laid before them was downward. The carnival had begun. Studio Lurch's adaptation of the gag comedy manga Take Moon was a breath of fresh air, simply taking characters from Tight Moon and throwing them into utterly bizarre scenarios. It was shortly after, the long-awaited revision of Nasu's first ever story has made its way into the eyes of fans, making such a wait worthwhile providing a cinematic visual spectacle within a mostly static medium. I sadly can't speak much for the story itself, but from what I've heard, it is the pinnacle of Nasu's writing. But it wasn't just a standalone novel. It was confirmed by Nasu in an interview with 4Gamer that this was just a single part of a trilogy. And of course, just like the rest of what was announced, the existence of Mahoyo sequels were just words lost in the wind. This was the start of the disappearance of all else. Years from the initial infection, the disease finally became symptomatic. With fate taking the reins of Tight Moon's production, 
90% of anything Type Moon was focused on its most popular IP, the Fate series, picking up the alternate timeline trend from the aforementioned Prisma Elia spin-off, resulting in a mess of a canonical timeline and starting the boom for the incomprehensible watch order for outsiders of the community. The Stay Night adaptations, Fate Strange Fake, Lord El Malloy, additions to the Fate Extraverse, Fate Cali Liner, Prisma Elia, Today's Menu for the Emia Family, Fate Labyrinth, Fate Requiem, Fate Type Redline, Fate Apocrypha, and most notably, the notorious Fate Grand Order, and so much more. Essentially, sifting out any Fate work. What Nasu had built for years had become quarantined to just one crevice of this vast world, giving Fate the spotlight. The catalyst that exacerbated this shift is to cash in with the franchise's success with the ever-so-popular Fate Grand Order. With the help of many others in the production committee, Nasu decided to create a gacha game for mobile devices in an attempt to reach a mass audience. With a bit of a rocky launch both in terms of the game's functionality and story quality, with time and dedication, the quality of both aspects rose exponentially surpassing Nasu's own expectations, becoming one of the highest grossing mobile games. And still, five to six years later, it's going strong. Albeit it being a financial success, giving massive funds to other projects, Nasu's time put towards Grand Order allowed for very little to be allocated to anything else. Until a faint light had sparkled once again. After all, it has been ten years. The carnival will once again be our salvation, they all thought, only to have the irony of one's salvation being the one to diminish their hope. With Carnival Phantasm's reincarnation, Fate Grand Carnival, to be fully focused around Fate Grand Order's characters and Fate Grand Order only. At this point, many had thought the exhibit before them was the full extent of the future. Convinced, fans had believed Tight Moon had fallen under the Fate curse. Yet, just when all hope was lost for the non-fate type moon fans. January 1st, 2021. The moon shone infinitely brighter that night, as a legend that has been passed down for years has once again bared its head for all to see, turning a once thought falsehood into reality. The highly talked about and doubtful release of Tsukihime Remake was confirmed for summer that year. The crowd caused an uproar of appraise and excitement, shaking in anticipation at the knowledge that the long-awaited game will at last come to them. Showing off the visuals and opening animation by UFO Table, leaving fans with a pleasant aftertaste, yearning for the date of its release. Three months later, on March 25th, the hiatus of Tight Moon Ace was broken with its 13th issue, giving the onlookers information regarding the material within the remake, and one extra surprise, the rebirth of a particular fighting game which had been left alone for the past 9 years. A month after the remake's planned release, the fighting game prequel, Melty Blood Type Lumina, will be following its tracks. For years, the lack of announcements have plagued Skihime fans, Yet not one, but two entries into the franchise were set to release within the same year. It was time to rejoice. Now with both products released, I and many others can say the wait was well worth it. The quality of both these games had surpassed expectations, receiving top ranked sales for their respective genres. While fate surely has plagued a part of the fandom, being the reason behind the long wait for Tsukihime, oddly enough, it has become a welcome addition, becoming an homage of sorts. Every piece of Tight Moon's history can be seen via Fate Grand Order. Throughout the game's life cycle, constant tie-ins to the entirety of the Nasuverse have been made. In some form or fashion, it is an encapsulation of what we have come to love about this boundless world put together by the mind of Nasu and many others. And with the finale of the Lost Belt arc, Nasu's involvement with the game is coming to an end. Hopefully, this means the anticipated projects of Nasu may finally be brought to fruition. As of now, only one future project is known to the community. The other side of Red Garden, the second half to Tsukihime Remake, with no release date confirmed. If this announcement was made years ago, surely there would be only a doubt behind it. But now that promises are slowly making their way into reality, it's safe to say 
it will happen in the near future. There's also mention of Nasu wanting to do Tsukihime 2, which if he does decide to and follows the Tsukihime 2 prelude, I think that works well within his vision for it. This was a history of a company that is within the heart of its fans, providing an abundance of entertainment with its meaningful, at times profound stories. With a strong start, tremendous growth, and lows along the way, no matter if you're a fan of Fate or the other series of the Type Moon world, we are entering a future where both can be satisfied. Now, we just need to wait for the re-announcement of Mahoyo sequels and girls' work. They will be a thing, right? And with that, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Later.